Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video we're going through my round 4 team review, going through how it was probably the round that broke the season in the end. I'm now like a thousand points off the lead, even though the guy in the lead is absolutely smashing it. I think he's like a good 300 points ahead of everyone else. Let me just check this. Yeah, he's a good 220 points ahead of everyone else and he's pretty much set up for the year, to be honest with you. Um, just looking at his team quickly here, he's already got a full uh, midfield and he's already got um, a pretty full forward line and he's just got a lot more cash gen um, than all us else as well as I wouldn't be surprised if he has more cash in general, like his team is just absolutely stacked, he's already um, just got yeah, mass cash gen I would say and then um, yeah there's not many more that have better uh, teams to be honest with you, there is a guy that's got another 500k in cash gen uh, but he's got some other uh, things to uh, get through but um, yeah a lot of people just have a lot more uh, cash generation out there and uh, they're going to do a lot better uh, than most of us um, just because yeah we had some a lot of injuries like I just cannot catch a break in the injury department um, as we saw with um, as we saw with the double game week I had one more injury yeah one more injury in that double game week which yeah kind of sucked but anyway let's just jump into this video here um, as you see here, I did score a 14.04, a uh, round rank of 5,300 for the round, um, total points 51.74, and a overall rank of 31.82. Um, 31, uh, I'm just trying to get, grab here the total points for the round, and you actually see Ali Anderson struggled. It was the Conway show that was the one that was, she went um, pretty big in it, and she was the one to grab for the double game week if you were to grab her. Over Bree Davy, you would have made um, about 250k difference in those two. And I probably would have even, if I'd had Conway, probably would have held her. But obviously didn't. I uh, don't have her. Even Ella Roberts did her job, as you see here, with a 117 to save it against the Brisbane Lions. Um, even Roe as well went 180. She got the roll over, um, over some others. So yeah, there was just, even Ali Drennan, you could have gone for her as well. She went... Um, 91.86, so she was even better than Davy. There was just a couple of girls that just, uh, yeah, didn't, um, I would say just didn't uh, score that well and went down massively in price. So yeah, it was actually um, it was actually better, I can tell you right now, if I had just gone um, Benucci here, had the goodie points here, and then um, had Marinoff's double points, I would have actually gained more points out of it than actually selecting um, and going for Bree Davy because she lost cash. She also had the swallowed up the double, and then, uh, yeah, she ended up getting less points than Goody in a single game. But, yeah, that's just how it uh, rolled this year for me. Um, and I think there's just, yeah, a lot of learnings out of this year, but in general also just I think a lot of it can just come down to being a little bit unlucky with everything. Huntington late out um, as well as, I mean, just look at it here quickly. You had week one, I had the, um, who did I have week one? You had uh, Too Good, who everyone had, that was that. And then rolling into week two, had Sheriff, that was pretty unlucky. Um, and then uh, week three, we had traded Sheriff into a Huntington DP, uh, DNP. And then had the Blackburn injury, and then traded in Blackburn to a Brie Davy injury. So knowing me, I'll probably trade into another injury. But yeah, we're just going to try and um, go for some wacky uh, stuff, some probably underpriced girls, and try and get some cash generation out of, basically out of the premiums almost in a way, which is not the way you should be playing it. But let's just hope that they can uh, go nuts in their games. And then we'll, um, yeah, just hope that um, something turns around because, yeah, in a way, this is... Uh, not probably what I wanted, I would say. Uh, Thomas, 133, she's done her job. Um, she's averaging 68, which um, if we go to total points for defenders, you'll see she is top. Um, Newman's actually done really, really well, and she's an interesting one in her double because I think she's got... I don't know if she's necessarily getting midfield time, but she's definitely pushing up and getting a lot of touches because of that. Uh, Grider at 3.05, she kind of saved it in the second game against uh, the Eagles, but yeah, she wouldn't have been in a good pick either. Um, she pretty much got um, what uh, Schleicher scored, and remember how I said Schleicher was going to be one that would score really well? Well, she's about top 10 for scoring um, behind many girls that even have the one game week. So that's probably something that we just got to watch out for is trying to um, necessarily go for girls that have um, bit part roles potentially or something like that like Schleicher was one that I was, I was sort of tempted into by the community rather and it kind of didn't work out I probably 
would have gone for someone else, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, it is what it is on that front. I think there's a lot of uh, learnings this year and a lot of just trying to analyze a lot more about um, these teams before going into the year. Um, and not trying to cram it in the last sort of week or two. Uh, Serene Watson, uh, 50-pointer after the 96. At least I got my rookie uh, roulette almost right this week. Um, almost. I say almost because there was 12 points lost this week to that. It was the captaincy roulette that I just completely lost. Probably should have... Um, I probably should have had it on someone else um, beforehand. Probably should have had the VC on someone and then the C on uh, Bree Davy or the VC on Bree Davy and then the C on someone else. That probably would have worked a lot better. But it is what it is. Um, yeah, Marinoff 138. She actually had a slow start and then just started to tackle everyone. Um, she was on one point with about five minutes to go in the first quarter and then just started... Yeah, she tackled about five other people for the rest of the first quarter and then, yeah, we'll get into that game review later on in the week um, once we get through all the videos today. But, um, yeah, she just dominated. Row bottom 94, didn't really get the tackling up. Uh, was the lowest tackle game of the year for her um, and the lowest kick... Uh, sorry, not the lowest kick game in, in general, actually. But, yeah, she just um, didn't get... Um, pretty much had lows across most lines in general. Um, but, yeah, so just a poor game from her. But she'll bounce back, I have a feeling, against a really weak... Uh, Collingwood midfield, you'd almost, um, aside from her being not in the double, she would be probably captaincy choice, to be honest with you, if it wasn't double. Um, Conti here with a Port Adelaide game this week. I'm pretty sure she's on the double, so um, I'm hoping they don't tag her. Um, but yeah, she's got the double. Uh, 98 against the Carlton when she was tagged, I think, second half. Just not working it extremely out for her. Massive low in tackling, which was a little bit annoying. She gets three, uh, three or so more tackles there, and that's a 110. Um, and that's a huge game, but the 98 almost this week was fine. Uh, Brie Davy, you can't really um, look at this. And, yeah, it's just sometimes this stuff happens. Um, she was tracking well for, I think, like a 95 or 100 probably. And then, yeah, just got concussed in the game. Um, and that really does suck. But, yeah, she was doing pretty well in the game. Eight touches and three tackles in that game up until that point. Uh, Ramos just never got the role, and I was really surprised given that, it, and, and it's really shocking coaching, to be honest with you, simple as that. You have a midfielder, and you don't play her in midfield when you're just losing midfield after midfield after midfield, and then you wonder why, um, and then you wonder why your team just gets run through. It's just the Collingwood coaching staff in general are just having a really poor tactical game plan so far this year, and they're just getting torn to pieces. They look even worse, and I know that they're losing players injury-wise, but the Swans game, they look their best this year. And then after that, they've been flattened by Hawthorne, flattened by uh, Brisbane, lost to West Coast, and then got flattened by uh, the Bulldogs, which really shouldn't have happened. And they honestly might not win a game, and they uh, they might finish rock bottom on the uh, AFLW ladder. I wouldn't be so shocked if they uh, don't win a game, which will be uh, pretty surprising in general when you start the season at that. But yeah, they're 39% and also uh, zero points, so... They're the last team without to get any points this year. So they're even worse than the Western Bulldogs side, who had a percentage of 12 after two games. Um, and when they were losing by 40 points, they somehow, they were they lost 46 to 6 or whatever, and it improved their percentage or something. So that's how bad this Collingwood side is. Um, Goody on a 45, she lost a little bit of cash. I'm guessing, nope, 2K gained. Um, I'm guessing she'll probably... Um, I don't know what i do with her. I might trade her out just to get the full midfield because the midfield is crucial, just given that we have a bit part role here, a rookie here uh, that's on the wing and stuff like that. So I'm just trying to get, generate cash, but also, yeah, just try and um, refresh. Um, and, yeah, so you'll see in my trades later this week. I'm just going to run with those trades, not even bother tra um, changing them and just run and just hope that they work. They probably won't, but I hope that they will. But yeah, Ramos, no role. Um, good E45, she struggled, I think, in the first half, but then um, started to generate some points and got up to 45. Hopefully she can, um, hopefully she can not score well because I don't think I'm going to have her for the um, double game week, which will be rough. Hartle, she really did well first game and then struggled second game, only went up 4K for the week or something. So uh, yeah, that really did, uh, she did struggle. And basically all the cash in that I thought she'd generate, she just lost basically. So um, yeah, there's that. And so, uh, yeah, she just was pointless. Um, and Fidler was the rookie to go for uh, last week as she's now gone up 264K. And so, yeah, she will be a really good Ruckman um, to go for. 
um, as she gets the solo ruck roll. And yeah, I basically don't think I'll be able to get up to a good ruck now because Hartle's cash gen has just stopped. Um, O'Dowd 62, she gains some more cash, um, only 57k this week, and plays West Coast, so we'll see how she goes, I'm just hoping she puts up another big score to gain some more cash, as kind of need it, as the rough roll is, um, yeah, there's not much I can really do at the moment, um, and we're just going to sort of wait, maybe I can upgrade, o o o but then again, O'Dowd has the, when does she have the double, um, AFLW fixtures, um, so yeah, we'll see about that when she has double, but I don't think it's, is it round six? Nope, it is round seven that she has the double and Hawthorne have it in six. So maybe I'll try and do an upgrade next week or something. Um, we'll see what we do, but yeah, I don't know about O'Dowd positioning. I'm just going to burn points in that ruck position, I feel like, for the rest of the year. Hall 80, Randall 79, these two did pretty well. Campbell with the 120 across the two weeks was pretty good. I think she'll be, just because of all the injuries, I think she's like the only um, actual on-baller left at um, at Collingwood. So I think she'll be uh, needed and she'll score well. Tripodi in the wet just tackled everything she saw. 13 tackles, 15 touches. So yeah, she did really well and now has the double. So She's um, hopefully going to make up some more cash even. And then Huntington scored a 31. Um, the going um, going Huntington over uh, O'Sullivan, I think, has already burnt me uh, like 150 points, 200 points. So, yeah, just little decisions like that. Going Bree Davey over um, Ali Anderson, stuff like that has really just burnt me in general. And I think in, in the last two to three weeks, just um, the flow on effect of injury after injury after injury has probably cost me 600, 700 points, just like that. So yeah, even the this, the captaincy here this week, if you look at the, um, the round points, uh, sorry, if you just look at the round points, it's burnt me about 280 points, I would say, if I'd had Ali Anderson over the likes of a, um, over the likes of someone else. But as you see here, the, the double girls are actually just plummeting down in price, which is an interesting thing to think about, um, actually. Um, and so, yeah, I, I don't know whether I'll be able to get like a Sabrina Frederick or something like that from O'Dowd, um, just because even though O'Dowd will have the double, she'll probably plummet down in price. Um, so I don't know whether it's a weird mechanic or something like that that's working um, against them. But yeah, I mean, Ali Anson hasn't scored a ton in what, three games. So it was probably warranted that she was going to go down in price, but 200k going down, it's quite a lot. Um, so yeah, that is a definite, I guess, watch. What did, um, yeah, Marinoff still went up 7k, which just shows that she's, um, she's just probably not going to go down. But anyway, um, that pretty much is the video there. You can see my cash gen has just gone in the first, in the matter of like two weeks, has just flipped completely on its head with all the injuries. Um, and trying to almost use up cash generating uh, tools on the bench um, to uh, generate more cash. And those ca those secondary tools like a hard tool, um, Huntington over like Pauga and Pauga just losing 100k and now being suspended for two games. Yeah, I, I have two forwards on the bench here that basically are dead. So yeah, I pretty much have no avenues out of this um, other than basically Dana Finn who I think is on field this week. Um, yeah, Dana Finn's on field at that D5 role, but she's basically got no cash in uh, left. So yeah, it, I'm in a tough spot, I would say at the moment. But anyway, that is the video there. If you did enjoy it, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.